Hey everybody, Austin here today and I am going to be bringing you another quick tutorial. Today we're going to be focusing on how to get a song from good to great or like radio ready. We're going to be focusing a lot on post production and sound design which is like the last 10 to 15% of a production. And in my opinion that's one of the things that really takes a track from being a solid track with a good chord progression or melody to a full encompassing piece that's really going to uh, draw the listeners in and, and keep their attention throughout the, the song. So today we're going to be using a song called Dark Shadows by Grayson Gibson and I produced, mixed, and mastered this over the summer and it's out now so if you want to you know, hear the full track or support it definitely go check it out. But without further ado let's take a look at the song as a whole. I saw a girl in the eyes of a devil Begging me to leave and come back home Never thought for a star with the heart of a rebel Just to look you in your face Cool. So that's a nice little idea of kind of what we've got going on, especially in the verse. So he brought the song to me and he had it on an acoustic guitar with just the chord progression and a guitar. And basically he had the vocal written and everything. So we took a listen to it. I took a listen and asked him what direction he wanted to go. And he said he wanted to go in like a really dark pop kind of industrial alternative pop uh, realm. So I was like, okay, well, let's let's focus a lot on sound design and soundscape because that's, you know, what these tracks are really all about. So I'll go ahead and play you just kind of we laid down like the little bass line and we laid down this little lead pluck right here. So this is all we had at first with the main vocal. I saw a guy in the eyes of a devil Begging me to leave and come back home I never thought Cool. So this bass, there's not really much going on. It's just, you know, any other normal bass pad just kind of filtered out. Um, but let's talk about this pluck for a second. So this pluck, let me go ahead and turn off all this stuff that I did on it and take a listen. So this pluck was actually this at first. Oh. Begging me to leave. So I don't even know how I got to that sound. I just picked a random sound in Nexus, um, a random like plucker or bell or something like that. And then this sounded really whack like this. So I knew that I wanted to, to make it a bit bigger. So I threw on a reverb to kind of give it some space. And then I threw on Camel Crusher, which is actually like one of my favorite uh, plugins or VSTs. And let's take a listen now. Begging me. Cool, so that was just a really easy way in one plugin to kind of add a little bit of distortion, a little bit of compression to kind of make it pop a little more, and then also this filter right here where I've got the cutoff pretty low. Um, so it basically just lo-fied it and compressed it all in one plugin, and then I kind of just took Pro-Q and took a little bit of the lows and highs out, and then did the same thing a little more drastically in my Cubase EQ. So let's take a listen now. Back in me. Cool. So, I mean, that took maybe five minutes to, to process that sound, to get it from that stupid sounding little bell pluck thing to this really ambient kind of, um, I guess it's like an 8-bit crushed bell type thing. I don't really know how to describe it, but that would be my best guess. So we kind of had that, and then we decided that we wanted a little more atmosphere and vibe and space. So we went in and I grabbed this pad. And then I grab this little chime. So those two sound like that. And then I brought in this little metal pad. And then we brought in these nice little wind sounds. So really like melodically, none of these sounds are really doing much for the song at all. Like they're just either following the same chord progression of that bass track or they don't have a chord progression at all. They're just completely like atonal. Um, but adding these really help kind of thicken this, this whole verse up because there's not a lot going on. We basically have all of these synths right here and then we've got a little clock and a nice little explosion on the down hit. So we've got like... And that's basically it. Uh, besides that, we have this nice little kind of hit right here. And this is actually just a vocal sample. So let me go ahead without any processing. Cool. So I took that down an octave in Little Alter Boy. And then I used this really, really cool effect for 
uh, from FabFilter called Timeless. I love using this on sound design because it's basically a delay that you can operate in stereo or mono, but as it delays, you can choose the modulation. So you can like saturate it as it delays. You can pan it as it delays. You can modulate it to wobble as it waves. Um, so take a listen to it now. So that one little vocal we kind of just took a minute or two to process with with little Alter Boy Timeless and then threw on a big reverb. And got that nice little, it's almost like a little uh, downshifter or something like that. And that was a really cool way to just tie in another organic element into a mix that was super, super electronic and industrial. And then we've just got these little white noise stutters right here. Begging me to leave and come back home I never thought and another thing we did to just keep the vocals interesting was we just had some harmonies come in right here on accent phrases. And then sometimes within the harmonies, I would even do an artificial harmony like this. As if a devil. So if you listen to devil, you'll hear it basically go down one octave. As if a devil. Right here. And that's actually just this vocal copy and pasted. And then it's the same vocal chain almost. I just took off the compressor and then pitched it down an octave. So that was really all I did for the for the verses. I mean, it's super simple. It just took a little bit of extra time to kind of find these pads and kind of process them to be the background noise and the atmosphere that we need. Let's get into where the drums come in on the verse. So there's not really much going on here. It's just this little kick drum that's the... Uh, which is just like a standard little 909 kick and I just filtered it out and bit crushed it a little bit in Groove Agent. And then this this little hit right here is kind of the star of these drums. So let's take a listen without processing. So on its own, it's already a really cool sound. I printed it from Damage and the sounds in Damage are unmatched for like epic and industrial sounds. So it was a great sound to start with, so I printed it out and then EQ'd it because I didn't really want so much body. I kind of wanted it lo-fi like the rest of the verse. Threw on a reverb because I wanted it to have a little bit more space and tail. And then once again came in with Fab Filter, Fab Filter hitting the clutch on this on Timeless. And I found this really cool uh, preset that's called Swing My Distortion. And basically what it does is as it delays on like the quarter note, it will distort it more and more. So it gave me this really cool effect of like the snare hit and then it almost sounds like a tire screech coming in. So check that out. And that was all just done kind of accidentally from that uh, timeless thing. So that's really all that we've got going on for this. The last thing I'll show you is just uh, kind of what we did for the percussion and the chorus to keep it interesting. So basically in the chorus it was, it was really simple. It was kind of... Um, this is kind of what it sounded like at first. So that just didn't have nearly the body that we wanted it to come in with this big epic cinematic chorus. So we worked a lot on like post-production on the drums. So one thing that I brought in was these cool little hand drums kind of, to kind of give it uh, some rhythm and some, some movement. So that helped out a lot, and then I just brought in this really, really big, roomy rock snare. And then the last thing was I just kind of printed some uh, really cinematic war drum type, uh, what kit is it? I believe in Damage, it is the um, Ensemble kit maybe? Let's check it out. The Armageddon kit. That's it. Um, so yeah, I just brought that in from from Damage and then printed it out. Um, so let's see. This is what it sounds like with all of these. And that really just helped bring that chorus to the next level and give it that really cinematic vibe. But that's going to be it for today. Just kind of take all these uh, little elements that we talked about 
and really work on giving your track that last 10% that it needs. But if you have any questions about anything, you found this helpful, definitely comment in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Comment with tutorials that you want to see next. You can find us at www.makepopmusic.com. And if you want to join a group that's specifically for pop production, check that out. We'll have a link in the description. It's on Facebook, and we run and moderate it. So just stop on by, show us some love, and chat with us. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.